Today I'm at the greatest place on the planet, likely. Definitely the greatest place in Washington. And I have my Corolla here. Unfortunately, DJ wasn't able to make it because he is at work. He had the day off, but his counterpart ended up getting sick, so he wasn't able to make it. But I'm here at Griot's Garage in Tacoma, Washington. We are going to be trying to focus on this. Cleaning up the paint on this and just giving it a real good detail. And uh, they're going to show us all of their cool products and how they all work. And they're going to teach me how they all work. Huge shout out to Griot's Garage for letting me come out. So we're gonna wash the car out here and then we will bring the car in there to do like more detail work. We should probably get a before photo or video. So this is the car. It looks actually kind of good in this light. So in real life, it doesn't look this good. Very dirty. With my eyeballs, you can tell that there's like a layer of dirt over the paint. The wheels are so bad. So since the car is a little more dirty, we are gonna do a, a foaming wash. But this is our Boss Foam Cannon. This is what we're gonna be using today. So you have the smaller thread and the larger thread, which would connect directly to the canister that comes with it, which we have capped currently. You have one-way vents, and those are on either side. That's gonna allow air in as needed, but it won't let the product leak out if it does tip over. <laughs> So there's just that little quick disconnect coupler that just slides right in there, if you can see. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Hold on. Oh no. What did you forget? I didn't wash wheels. Oh shoot. So let's talk about wheel and tire cleaning. So the two products that we're gonna use today are the foaming tire cleaner and the heavy duty wheel cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray the wheel cleaner first and just thoroughly apply it because these wheels need some TLC. And then foaming tire cleaner. Just gonna cake that on as well. While that wheel's flowing, we're gonna go ahead and get this one started. All your products oh, smell so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Over time, you'll see that it'll turn like a purpley magenta if there are ferrous contaminants. This one's all dirt, dirty. And yeah, it's kind of like pinkish. Yep. Matches the car. So we've got a few different wheel tools. Um, some of my favorite are the bendable wheel brushes. This is the compact. We also have a large bendable wheel brush. Yeah, we need those for those. Cause I those know. are not like DJ's wheels where you can just scrub them like a dinner plate. And all this stuff is stuff that you guys sell, right? Mm -hmm. This little brush here, um, this is actually able to be used as an interior cleaning brush, but also it works really well for love mats. Oh, nice. So Damn, honestly, I forgot these uh, these wheels were like light gray. Oh shoot, I forgot the first step. Oh wait, no, I was doing it right. Yeah, from the bottom, the bottom up, you're good, yep. Fun for the whole family. <laughs> Just squirted myself in the eyeballs. <laughs> Not recommended. Will it clean my eyeballs? Uh, maybe too well. So now that we've cleaned the wheels, we're gonna go ahead and foam on from the bottom up so that the heavier areas are getting soaked first and allowed to dwell longer as we work. I'm gonna go ahead, do that real quick. helping to break down any uh, remnants of any waxes or sealants that are on the surface and that'll give us a completely bare surface for when we're ready to polish or paint. Oh, that sounded violent. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine, I'll just break your car. No big, no big deal. If it you was have breakable, right? I would have broke it by now. True, actually. You're a lot harder on it than I'm being. <laughs> yeah. If it was breakable, I would have broke it by now. You'd probably tape, take the tape off today. It would make yeah. the viewers happy. They don't want to see it. No, I hate it. <laughs> Damn, it's already looking so good. All right, so now that we've thoroughly cleaned the surface, we're just gonna dry it with our extra large PFM edgeless drying towel. Um, this will hold about five and a half pounds of water, so it'll easily dry an entire vehicle with just one towel. You won't have to wring it. You'll probably do two vehicles even. That's crazy. 
on a well waxed surface, it'll be immediate dr immediately dry. Um, surfaces that don't have protection on them typically will hold onto water a little more, so it may take another pass. Either way, it makes the drying process a lot easier and quicker. We're gonna see amazing results with this. I can feel the drag from like contaminants in the paint. Yeah. Kind of hear it too. Yeah, yeah, it's a little scratchy. She needs to exfoliate. Yep. All right, I'm gonna drive this thing back over to where we just pulled that Jeep out of. We made it in. All right, I knew this was gonna have to happen. Today is the day I take the blue painter's tape off of the car. Hopefully the paint doesn't come up with it. This has been on here since we painted the car, basically. Uh, so we're gonna see what happens. Hopefully it's not too bad. <laughs> Boom. It's naked now. It doesn't look like the same car. All right, so because we took the paint or the painter's tape off, now there's some nasty residue. So we got to try to get that off, and hopefully they've got something to do that. Yeah. Uh, so normally we would recommend citrus multi-surface cleaner. The um, best smelling stuff in the world. Yes, by smells the way. like like fresh peeled oranges. I heard you <laughs> use it on uh, upholstery, and don't recommend that. I, yeah, <laughs> but, I use it on everything. I actually have one in my shower. Well, kidding. if it works, it works. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to use this until we decided to use our unreleased, um, mm. but previously announced in our SEMA launch. Um, it is called 3-in-1 Bug Tar Sap Remover. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this on. Just thoroughly saturate since there's quite a bit of adhesive left. Comes right off. Wow. It wasn't even there. I did not expect it to be that easy. So now that we have removed above surface dirt from the vehicle, we are going to come in with our decontamination tools. There are two, I guess, types of decontamination tools. There's mechanical and chemical. The chemical options we have are foaming surface prep, which we had used on the surface. This does remove light contamination. We also have iron and fallout remover, which I believe we briefly talked about. This is a iron and ferrous particle remover from paint and other surfaces. We're going to move to a mechanical decontamination tool. How these work is instead of pulling the contaminants into the surface, it's actually pulling the contaminants out of the paint, but they're resting in the speed shine between these channels as you're running the surface across the paint. So I'm just gonna get some speed shine on there. If you're not sure how much to use, it's better to use more speed shine than not enough. And then again, just light pressure, and I'm just gonna glide this across the surface. And you can hear all that contaminant. Yeah. This will sound a little bit louder than a, a traditional clay bar. That's just the nature of the beast. Like I said, usually three to four passes and then wiping is, um, it will suffice. If you run the back of your hand, it really helps Ooh. you feel yeah. kind of the texture. You can hear yeah, it. Yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> is that a sandwich baggie over there? That's crazy. Right, so we're nearing the end of the first process, I believe, right? Uh, technically second, because we washed it, but... Oh yeah, and then uh, next we're gonna start taping stuff off. Yep, we're gonna clean the trim and tape it off so that we can start polishing. Another product that worked here. Shining up the, the blast pipes, but this is our metal polish. We've got two different ones. This one's all chemical based, so there's actually no abrasives in it, but you can see like, if you look at this one compared yeah. to that one, it's already looking like way different. Uh, this is rubber prep, um, which we are using to remove any um, silicones, uh, dressing residues, oils, and things like that from the rubber and plastic trim. That way it's completely bare and ready to accept a dressing after we polish. Uh, the idea with this tape is that we want to cover any trim adjacent to paint surfaces so that we can polish without having to be delicate and careful about hitting those. We can just come up here and polish because everything's protected. All right, tape is done. The next step is polishing. We're going to get everything ready and then get to it. We're gonna go ahead and get started polishing. I'm just gonna briefly cover our two enthusiast grade orbitals. One of them being the three inch platform, which is the G8. Um, it does come with both a three inch plate and a two inch plate. Um, this is really great for getting into tight little areas. And then we have the G9, which comes with a six inch plate and you can um, get a five inch plate to swap it out to. All right, we're taking a quick break from the detail session, but that's where we just were. And we're walking down the hill to another, I don't really know what it is, a warehouse, I guess. Yeah, oh Grio's shit, motor. there's the toter home. Grio's Motors, yeah, that's what it is. 
So we're gonna go take a look and see what's in here. I guess more cool things are down here. We'll have it these nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I even need to be here. I just really need, I saw the picture of the board and I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, this is a client's car that we're doing some you know, minor uh, detail work onto some of the windows that had, they're all Lexan glass from the rear C pillar back, so they need to be uh, less sanded and polished out. What so, this is a Grios Motors, it's a restora restoration, detail, paint, storage, and car sales. Hmm. So, oh, and this is the restoration. Too? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, none, neither of those cars. We do fabrication. We start with the dirtiest work over here. Fabrication. Uh, this is a disassembly lift. Yeah. yeah so that's the that's a 165 kilometer uh, Lancia Delta Integral. Mm. It's covered because we've done a pretty big detail on it. I uh, don't want it to get dusty. <laughs> It's kind of like a car model at this point. So yeah. just want to make sure we don't have to do any more work to it. It's for sale. It is for sale. And yeah. We're hoping to get this thing. We're currently talking to a couple people, but uh, nothing nothing done yet. Nice. So another really low mile, mileage, 1988 930 turbo. Is this one for sale too or no? This is for sale as well. Pretty awesome condition. Yeah, it looks like it. Ooh, what is this? Oh, fuck. Uh, this thing has been an absolute nightmare to find parts for. Yeah, Because there are not very many. What, what are you guys doing with it? Just wanted this, it? This thing is going to be sold, so we have to do like a, a normal car detail is between 10 and 16 hours. This is probably gonna be a 40 hour detail <laughs> to get this thing yeah. back. Uh, they're massive goats. They can just crawl over anything. Anything, yeah. Um, they don't go very fast, but you can see, I mean, driving this thing on the highway, you're, you just look down on everything. <laughs> look at how big this is compared to me. All right, my phone just, or my, my camera died, but we were just in there uh, with the Ferrari and stuff. And now we're going into this building. So I'm filming on my phone. <laughs> Holy, oh my God. <laughs> the junkyard. It's not a mix of project cars, uh, unsold inventory cars and um just clients storage cars a ton of projects oh, that kind of just accumulate. this is my uh, favorite already yeah, the F -day. yeah. damn uh, it's so clean what the one that that one was found at the bottom of the oh that other one <laughs> that is insane <laughs> this mercedes has a car phone in it my <laughs> big I baller I, dude. I can call like three numbers from this uh <laughs> If any of you guys follow me on Twitter, you would have known that I was about to buy one of these the other day, but the dude sold it out from under me. And here's a really super sick and clean one in this garage. I really want to get one of these for my next car, kind of like a four x four overlanding vehicle. This one's super cool because it's got two doors. A lot of them that you'll find for sale have four doors. And I think the two doors look way cooler. They're like little land cruisers, like knockoff land cruisers for the cheap poor man like myself. The cleanest Miata you'll ever see. Two of them. Yeah. Oh, is the mileage on that on that one? Or was it the red one or the white one? Okay, well, the camera died. Uh, I shot some stuff on my phone down there in that insane car collection garage thing. But now we're back up here and we're about to start polishing. I'm very excited. The car already looks so good. And I'm like, damn, could it actually look better? So you can see I'm kind of squeezing as I'm moving to avoid getting that thick product like where I started. I'm going to lightly rub it in. You don't have to do that. That's optional. You don't have to worry about the cord coming out while you're working. It's very secure. I am going to start on speed three and just quickly spread the product over about a two foot by two foot section that we're going to work in. Um, it's always good to start with a test section before you do, uh, before you polish the entire vehicle, just to be sure that your method is getting you the results that you like. Thing is I like to just dab to kind of outline the area I'm going to work in. The goal here is that I want to keep the backing plate as flat or the pad as flat against the paint as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and spread the product real quick. <laughs> Overlapping passes. I like using.
using these plush edgeless towels. I'm going to come in and wipe the product off. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to grab an LED light and assess the surface. That's not too bad. Not too bad up there. But this should just knock out some of those random deeper defects. It's going to be tough to see on on camera just because the metallic and the lighter yeah. color but it's always nice i always for a personal car especially metallics are the best because once you get them right they're a lot easier yeah. to keep looking right versus a you know plain black car where like the first time you wash it you get swirl marks back if you're not careful Really good. Oh, well, forest will yeah. probably kill Super you. Noticeable. All right, so we're Can I tell you? pretty much almost done. Um, we did half of this, and then we had that tape over here. So we're just looking at the difference in uh, in the paint now, and you can tell where right there where the where we didn't do it yet. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Really cool. It's coming along nicely. We're all finished Orbital, orbitalizing. So now we're going to peel off all this tape and clean up the glass because this glass really needs some help. Yes. <laughs> all right, so we're going to polish the glass. Oh, it's already been decontaminated. There's not too many water spots in this glass, which is good, but there are a lot of really light scratches and scuffing some of which will come out some of which won't so a lot of times like scuffs will from these come out those will not oh. unfortunately <laughs> those will not buff out <laughs> i wish they would but but uh a lot of the scuffs will if it's a scratch it's probably not going to come out of glass if it's a scuff it likely will so we'll see how good we can get this but we should definitely be able to improve it at least somewhat it is okay to polish windshields and glass that have cracks or chips in them you just want to be a little bit cautious with pressure when you're going over those areas. Since it's decontaminated, we just cleaned it, got off all the polish residue. We're going to hit it with our fine glass polish. Um, this is a cerium oxide based glass polish, which is the main abrasive or active ingredient that you want to see in a good glass polish. This process can be done by hand or orbital. It is pretty effective by hand, but you're pretty limited to like light to moderate water spots. If you're going after severe water spots or like scuffing, you're going to want a machine to do this. Um, and the orbitals really just speed it up pretty drastically. You'd end up spending two or three times the time if you did it by hand. Um, this is a water-based product, so it does tend to get a little bit messy, but we'll butter the pad, just a nice even layer. You don't want tons. This is a thinner product, so if you over apply, it does tend to sling pretty easily. Start out slow so we don't sling everywhere. I usually like spreading this out over a pretty big surface because it is a thinner product. So we'll cover the whole half of the windshield here. What's up, Jason? How you doing, man? Good. I like using our window cleaners. Hose it down. Makes it much easier to Get all the residue off in a couple passes. Oh yeah. And you can still see some of those scratches in there, but they definitely lightened up and this is starting to come out. There's, you know, it's kind of there in portions still, but yeah. So now that we've perfected the surface, we're gonna come in and protect it with ceramic three in one wax. This is an extremely durable, insanely hydrophobic, and it adds intense gloss. Typically you'll get about six to 12 months out of this, depending on how the vehicle's prepped and whether it's daily driven. But this is a great option. It actually, uh, the three in one has two meanings. One of them is the type of protection in the product, which would be um, synthetic polymers, carnauba wax, and SiO2 or ceramic. Um, the other is the three features that you get, which we talked about, the durability and the hydrophobicity and the... Um, hydrophobicity. Yeah. They're just 
pretty much the repellency of the water yeah. and then the gloss. This is super easy to apply. Um, really, you want to have the surface completely clean, uh, polished if you're going to do that. Um, and then you just, just make sure that the product doesn't dry on the surface. And you also want to make sure either that you have a separate towel to follow and ensure that the surface is completely dry or that you're flipping your towel and ensuring that the side that you're working with is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and just lightly mist the surface. And then I'm going to come in with the plush microfiber towel, just straight line passes, spread the product. Now I'm going to come in with the other side and buff it dry. It's as easy as that. We're going to go ahead and do that on the entire surface. All right, here it is in all of its glory with the paint, the painter's tape back on the hood. I didn't really think this through very well, because I don't have plates with me, but I had to put tape back on because now the paint's looking extra fresh. Huge thanks to everyone who helped out today. Yeah, also huge thanks to just Griot's Garage in general. Huge thanks to Nick over there for letting me come by. I'm super excited with how this turned out, and it just kind of made me fall in love with the car again, which is always fun. I got this big grocery cart full of goodies. Thanks for all this. I'm very appreciative. You are most welcome. That put it to good use. Yeah, I will. So now there's no excuse for my car to be looking ugly anymore because I got all the stuff to do this, basically. Hopefully you guys gained something from this video and uh, are maybe a little more apt to do this to your own car now. Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, Griot's Garage will be linked in the bio down below. All of the products we use today, you can buy on their website. So anything tickled your fancy, uh, go check it out and 10% off, right? Use code more skids, 10% off all liquid products. All liquid products. So like the Speed Shine or the or the Citrus Multi-Surface Cleaner, my favorite personally. With the code more skids. I'll have that in the description as well. So if your dad's trying to buy some stuff to clean his car, if you're trying to buy some stuff to clean your car, enter code more skids and uh, get 10% off little treat. Thank you guys again for watching. Thank you guys again for helping. Check out Griot's Garage. This place is awesome. And until next time, thank you. Peace out. Bye.